This part of the class is about making techniques um, continuous and flowing whilst being sort of fast and slow together. And it's taking away sort of dead time in your kata. So I see a lot of people practice kata where they kind of do these kind of moves and then they just stop and then they maybe do this punch and push your show and they stop and then they get to this slow move again. It just feels like the kata has just gone to sleep. And as a referee, when I sit there, Good. When someone says go to your show, I wait to the second or third move and then you just know already I'm just going to be bored. And I don't want to be bored, I want to be excited by a kata. And that means it has to be alive all the time. So I want these techniques to be alive. There are like very few moves in kata that are just slow. They've generally got that whoosh feeling to them. So I want you to think whoosh when you're doing this. So what we're going to do is we're going to piece together a mini combination. We're going to work on that together. It's not about the combination because the combination is just a gimmick. And you'll say, if you go away saying, oh, that was a good combination, I'm just going to try to punch you. Okay, because it's, the combination is not important. What's important is the thing within it. Okay, so we're going to do a little combination, and then you're going to work on making your karate alive throughout this kind of continual feeling of whooshing through the moves. All right? Also, so instead of being fast, 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 just smooth and slow. Smooth and slow. Okay? Just that. That's all we're going to do. Just take your time, and then we're going to move to the next one. This way, this way, we just alternate side. Yeah, we're just going to take our time, whereas before we were initiating that speed, now everything, just about technique, working through in a smooth way. about making something more difficult and challenging for the hips so you know that you're teaching the hip to do something to help your upper body. So rotate, rotate and then you're just going to pull whether that comes as a gidambarai or this usual sort of pulling action or a hikite, doesn't matter, whatever feels best for you. But in turn what we're doing is that same technique from here but we're just allowing our body to learn it a bit more. And what we want to try to build is twitch rather than one tip. So it's like you're hitting and then recovering because you might want to do another one. Yeah, so from here, drive and then just recover back. So what you're not doing is you're not rotating and pulling, you're rotating and then just squeezing your core back to the center. There's a difference, yeah? Rather than one, two. So you don't want that effect into your punch, this. If you're finding that difficult, I've always found this is a nice method. Just pull and drive. Just as that reminder of that muscle memory you need at the end of the technique. Okay. What we're trying to do with this wave is this is like the door closing one, and then this one's driving out too. So you will you will come forwards. So if you just look at yourself, you've got the mirrors. Look at yourself and check you're not just turning on the spot. One, two. Not this. So just take your time when you're going through the process. Push, engage, squeeze your inner thigh muscle, then drive on the second one. Almost to that point where your knees are right over your toes, you're shaking a bit because your quad's really working hard into that position. But you should feel that at the end. You shouldn't be here. Back, come up. Pitch, knee, sun, chi. Come on. Pitch, knee, 